Well, hello, Dr. Mulder. This is Dr. Liz. Greetings. How are you doing this fine day? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I just went to a wedding this week, and it was just fabulous, very low-key. We called it the Rona wedding because there were only nine of us there, and we were all legal and everything. So, oh, really yeah, we're all six feet apart. Yeah, yeah, all well, feet, yeah including... I think the bride and groom, they were not six feet apart, but that was fine. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Well, hey, you know, uh, hey, they're about ready to go on their honeymoon, so, you know, get over it. Uh, so <laughs> there you go. But, uh, no, uh, fantastic. So uh, all went well, and I'm glad to hear that. And uh, you made it home safe and sound. That's also good news. I'm glad to hear that also. Yeah, it's really rainy here in North Carolina. It rained oh. all day, all day. Yeah, same here. It's just been dreary, uh, you know, overcast and everything like that. Uh, and I've just been sitting here all by my lonesome building parts for to make all machines. The, the so, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for all the good little girls and boys across the world. But, uh, yeah, uh, starting to get everything caught up here. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, hopefully I'll have everybody who's ordered stuff, like in the last week, I should have their stuff out within two weeks, so that's good. Um, and plus I've been getting a lot of things asking about the lottery. Um, about gambling and the lottery, and I, I think we'll probably save that for another show. But I think we're going to make this another one of our series of um, you know little helpful hints here about using radionics and you know gambling, okay. and uh, I think we'll kind of make a little special show about that. But uh, yes, I just want to let everybody know, yeah, uh, uh, the lottery thing. We will go into more detail about that here in the future. But uh, other than other than that, I mean, everything's been great, and I uh, got a really nice uh, testimonial today, and um, that was really cool. I mean. And I get these things all the time, but you know, it's just, it's just, it, it. This is the kind of thing that makes me, you know, that for me, it, it's what makes it all worthwhile. You know, is able is getting this kind, these kind of responses from, you know, from my customers, and you know, you know, and the changes, the positive changes that, that they're making in their lives, and and I just really appreciate that. I, I just have to say, uh, uh, you know, getting these. Uh, you know, letters and what have you, it just really, it just makes my day. And then I just want to let everybody know, thank you. Really oh, yes. It. So, so everyone, <clears throat> Dr. Mulder, Dr. Mulder emailed that to me today because he was so proud of himself. Uh, <laughs> and so no. I want to read it out loud because he was being too shy to read it. Yeah. But here it goes. He says, hello, Dr. Mulder. This is T. He's going to be anonymous. I bought an e-machine a month ago, and I just wanted to let you know how thankful I am. Three things have happened so far. Two days after I received my e-machine, a check arrived in the mail for me from a bank I used to have an account with. Through litigation, overdraft fees were returned to me. I haven't had an account with this bank for years. Then my mother sends me $100 through PayPal. I did not ask my mother, my mother for the money. She just sent it because she thought I could use it. The last and most profound thing was that two weeks after I received my e-machine, I received my federal taxes. When I first put out the intent to get a wishing machine, I was going to use my federal tax money to buy one. That federal tax money originally automatically went to student loans I owed. I did use some of my stimulus check to purchase my e-machine. Because the stimulus check wasn't planned, it did come out of left field. Only once my e-machine showed up did I receive my federal tax money. This supports my belief that these machines, along with the subconscious mind, brings a person's intent into reality through the indirect approach. Thank you once again, Dr. Mulder, T. Oh. So, um, yeah, we get those kind of comments all the time. And then we got a great comment on our show about, you know, this is a great mystical, magical show. Thanks to you guys. You know, we, we, we want to have, we have fun here. And I think it's what makes the show is because we're just having a blast with each other and with this stuff. We love it. And we are like, you know, one of, one of my goals anyway, is to take this beyond coast to coast, like beyond coast to mm -hmm. coast, but real, like not pablum, not repetitive, boring corporate shit. So we're like oh, yeah. really raw edge of the sword out there. Real. We keep it real. We kind of plan what we're going to talk about, but really, as you know, folks, it gets kind of wild and wooly sometimes. So. Oh yeah. And that's one thing I always loved about coast to coast. I mean, a lot of the guests that you have on there is people you never heard of. They never wrote a book. They were never on a TV show. They weren't trying to push anything. Uh, I think one of, them, one of the most memorable shows was the thing about Mel's Hole. There was this guy that lived out somewhere, I think it was the southwestern United States, and there was like this giant hole on his property, and people just throw garbage in it or whatever, and it would never fill up. And he's, you know, he, and he uh, did some testing uh, where he got fishing line. There was like a, I think it, almost like a half a mile long. Is you know, he's dropping a weight down there trying to find the bottom of this hole, and never. They couldn't find it. Then the government came in and they shut it down, and they took over, they confiscated or uh, 
I wouldn't say confiscated, but they basically took over that part of the property of his property, and uh, just little things like that. And I'm just like, well, where the heck did this come from? And you know, there's another thing about this one guy that was out out in California who was selling these time machines, and he was going through how this thing worked, and you know, whether or not whether or not the time machine worked, that was irrelevant. It's just it was fascinating to hear these stories, and that's what I'm trying to, you know, that's what I was trying to. Uh, that was part of my idea too. Like when we started doing the show, was uh, bringing in people who who are not exactly you know world famous or whatever, but have uh, unique skill sets and unique knowledge, and just uh, you know kind of uh, you know bring it to our little special audience here and let them you know check it out for themselves because nowhere else will they find this information. I mean, yet yeah, you might be able to find it, but not the way we present it, and not the kind of people that we bring on the show. Right, and um, I mean, and again, not th- I do enjoy Coast to Coast, but li- re- literally, if you listen to Coast to Coast nowadays for one year, you will just get a repeat for the following year, and you get the same information. It's mm-hmm. always Area 51 and Karen Dahlman and the Ouija board. Great stuff, but it does stop there. It's just I find it limited, but good, good quality, but limited. So anyway, right. so I was talking to, so folks, I was talking to Dr. Mulder about something I want to talk about tonight, which is combining... Uh, candle work with the radionics boxes and Mm -hmm. I want to present to you guys tonight kind of some thoughts I have and tell a story and some ideas and invite you all to do this stuff work to do this work with me and tell me what y'all think so this winter after about December until about a month ago I was just having a hard time in my life it's just one of those one of those challenging seasons that we all have maybe some of you out there have marvelous lives every minute but I was kind of you know, a little bit in trouble. I was always of good cheer and, you know, working it and trying to find a job and whatnot. And, but it was, it was a, it was a tough time. I'm not going to go into details, but it was just a bit challenging. Mm -hmm. And I was in a place where I couldn't really, really spread all my, I'm a spiritual person. I have a lot of worship items. I have oils. I have this, I have that. I was living in a place where I couldn't really spread that out. So I had it all in a storage unit and I didn't have access to my stuff. So what I decided to do is I went and got I, I used lots and lots of vigil candles. A vigil candle is a glass candle with wax inside of it. So when you burn it, it's encased in a glass jar, basically. Mm-hmm. And when it burns down, you can actually read the candle. You can read the, 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 the glass. And if it's a black soot or a white smoke or where the wax is or whatever, whatever, you can actually read that. And kind of, It's like a readout device. And you can okay. see how the spell burned, you can see how the, how the working burned down. And for example, if you see a lot of black soot, I mean, this is not a candle reading class, but if you see a lot of black soot, it means that there's a lot of opposition to what you're doing. And if the black soot goes all the way down the candle, well, you probably should light another candle and do some more work. God or the spirits or whatever are still doing some work. If the Mm -hmm. black soot's only at the top, but the glass clears on the way down, that's a good idea that God or the spirits or what have you have cleared away the issue. And it's a great, great readout device. And the, the process is also called setting lights. So that's all I really could do for a while. So I think in December and January, I set about 40 vigil candles just for road opener, for jobs, for this, for that, for housing, for this and that. And I did a lot. And I find them somewhat powerful, but I didn't find them hugely powerful in terms of work. Like, you know, you set them in you can light them and keep doing them in succession. You, you light a candle and you get lots of black soot. You get another candle, you do it for the same reason. I'm going to talk about how to do that in, mm-hmm. shortly. But, but anyway, I was like candle after candle after candle, and eventually it would start to clear up for me. You know, In terms of the glass would be more clear at the end of the burning once the wax burned all the way down. Then I was able to spread out a bit, and I started using taper candles or solid co- conical uh, cone-shaped candles or columnar-shaped candles or figural candles, which are candles shaped in a shape like a cat or a man or a woman or a head or something like that or a Nefertiti or something like that. Mm-hmm. Those are called those are known as figural candles. When I started putting those on a plate and anointing them with oils, I got some of my stuff out of storage. When I started anointing these candles with the oils and maybe using some herbs and spices and plants or flowers around the base of the candle on the plate uh, and maybe putting a petition paper, you know, underneath the plate or carving it onto the candle and lighting that, I felt like if the vigil candles were giving me about 30% power, if you will, power to accomplish a goal or achieve an intent, achieve a wish, Mm -hmm. burning a live candle on a plate became like, 
it went up to 70% efficacy. It was very powerful work. Now, what I don't know was when I started lighting the, the uh, figural candles or the taper candles on a plate, was that building on the work I'd already done with the vigil candles? I don't know, right? That's what I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I noticed things started to get more and more powerful, more and more powerful. And then I don't know when I was talking to you, Dr. Mulder, maybe in March, I think I started to finally, I got your radionics boxes out of storage and put them in my room and I set them. And all of a sudden things started to explode wonderfully and abundantly. And again, I don't know if the little vigil candles built up a little stuff, you know, magical power, if you will. And then the candles on a, the loose free candles, freestanding candles on the plate burst into more power. And then when I finally lit the, lit the boxes, <laughs> lit the boxes, when I finally set the boxes, did that just build on everything? And then it just, my life just whatever, whatever, or maybe astrologically my Saturn return was over say, and it was just time. My season mm -hmm. was you know, I don't know if it was just the season where it didn't matter what I did. Right. Um, but I just want to say that I want to talk a little bit about tonight. So that, that's the story. And my experience got me thinking about this. And I wanted to talk about, a little bit about possible use of layering by doing candle magic or candle work with the boxes. What do you think excellent. of that? I think that yeah? would be excellent. Please. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, maybe some of our listeners already do this kind of work. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I want to just encourage you to continue it now. What I want to say is Dr. Mulder and I agree, you don't need to do any other work besides the boxes. The boxes are fine. As a matter of fact, it's less expensive because you buy one box from Dr. Mulder, you don't have to keep buying candles and oils and plants and flowers, <laughs> right? And roots and herbs and stuff. You just use the box, right? I'm just right. saying, I'm just offering this up as additional information if it interests anyone, if right. you're already lighting candles. Now, I want to talk about uh, verbiage here because... Um, you could say, I say I do candle work. You could say I do candle magic. Uh, I don't know. I think, I don't always like to use magic because I think it's vague. It has some sort mm -hmm. of different connotations about it. Really, anything we do is magic. So if I say something nice about Dr. Mulder, like, Dr. Mulder, you're looking very smart and intelligent today. You silver fox, you. He does have <laughs> silver fox hair, everybody. Um, I have seen him live. Um, and that's a blessing. That's magic. I am actually blessing Dr. Mulder, right? Mm -hmm. If I if I get mad at someone and curse someone who's cut me off on the road and I say some bad expletive about them, that's magic in a way. I'm cursing them, right? Mm -hmm. Everything we say and do is magic. You can even pray over making your coffee in the morning and pray that you have a blessed, beautiful, gorgeous, amazing day as your coffee's brewing. That's magic. You know, you can do it with your food. So everything's magic. And so sometimes I don't say that word. I say that I'm doing candle work. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, I, but. For me, for some reason, Dr. Mulder, I love colorful candles and I love good smells and I love looking at flowers and and all the vibrations that the plant material do. You know, when you use the senses of the scent and the eyes, the visual stuff, the sense, the smell, the flowers, the visual beauty, um, I it just doing this work feels so yummy to me. So I like to do it anyway, right? Mm -hmm. And it's and it's just really really fun because. As you're adding each element, you could almost look at each element of this working. Like when you're putting, when you're rubbing oil on a candle, I'm going to talk about that in a minute, maybe how to do it. But when you're rubbing oil on a candle, let's say you want to attract a love relationship and you take a love oil uh, and you rub it around on a candle, that's like setting one of the dials, right? And as you're praying or praying an intent over a candle, that's like setting another dial on the box. Right. So, you know what I mean? So I think it can really add to your work. And, and before I start describing some examples of how to do this, I also want to say that, remember I talked about the vigil candles? You can actually read candles. You could read candle wax melted down on a plate. I'm not good at that, personally. You mm -hmm. can read uh, a, one of those vigil candles. You could read the glass. I am good at that. I understand that much better than loose wax melted on a plate. I, that just mystifies me. But there are people who read candles, candle burnings. And... Uh, but, but you can actually, say, get a plain white candle from the dollar store, you know, with uh, mm -hmm. Our Lady of Guadalupe or something on it. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Right. And you can light it when you set your box. And it can actually give you a readout device on if you're setting a box for something that's long term, like what we talked about last time or a couple times ago about attracting a great love. Sometimes those things take time. And you could get a readout device on how it's going. You could, get, you could read the candle 
and the glass and you can get a readout of how the box is working for you, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or an idea of timing with that. So, so anyway, I just thought this was kind of interesting if someone wants to layer that. In the description box below, I'm going to describe some people on YouTube who describe how to do this kind of work um, and some sources of oils and stuff like that. But it's, I just find it fascinating. So I just love doing it, so I do combine the work. I'll, I'll set a candle on a plate, and I'll light it and do it, and then I'll do a box next to it. And I think, I think it's like, you know, you know how you have your e-machines that you plug in? Right. Um, it's like plugging it in, you know, and I think that, so I don't know. What do you think about that? I think it's fascinating. And again, I've used, uh, for example, uh, Shelly, a mutual friend of ours. Uh, she's given me uh, potions, that, that kind of thing, over the years. And I've always incorporated those with the machines. I've used them as witness samples, projecting the energy from uh, whatever she's given me toward a particular target, and uh, including myself. And I've always had very, very good results. And again, uh, I think you know, when you're using these machines, you're taking the intent or the, I like to use the word mojo a lot, the mojo from, you know, from whatever the spell is or, or the potion or, or what have you, and you're amplifying that and you're focusing that toward a particular target, you know, for a particular intent. And uh, even Shelly does a lot of candle work. I've seen pictures of some of the things she's done. And, um, and uh, you know, I think you two are probably in the same, you know, in the same, uh, uh, same status when it comes to, or you know, the same league when it comes to uh, you know doing that kind of thing. And uh, I've always found that fascinating because, again, uh, you two are very powerful uh, manifestors. And uh, yes, uh, yes. And I and I, it's just uh, I like watching uh, people you know at their trade, at their you know, at their craft. And uh, you both, uh, you definitely astonished me. I mean, both of you have. And uh, and so yeah, what you're you know what you're saying here. Yeah, I'm not a stranger to it at all. And again, I have, you know, even though that's not my forte, that's not what I do. I I, I do take what your you know, your your stuff, uh, the kind of things that you work on, and I do incorporate them with the radionics machines in order to uh, expedite a, a particular operation. So, and it does work. I hands yeah, that's down. right. You said you mentioned use the money potion. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So, exactly. and to your and to your point, if someone wants to attract love, and and you can combine this all different ways. You're just giving me all these great ideas. Let's say someone is attracting a relationship. You mm -hmm. can, on whatever witness sample you're using that represents you, or mm -hmm. on a piece of paper or whatever you're doing that represents love, you mm -hmm. can put some love oil on it. Right? Correct. And I'm going to explain what I'm talking about. So you don't have to light the candle. I'm just describing. Um, so let's talk about how to do this. All right? Let's do so, it. So if you... You know, if someone wants you to just start, like, what do you mean, Liz, with candle stuff with a radionics box? What, do you ha what the heck are you talking about? The easy way to do it is you go down to the dollar store and grab a couple of colored candles, right? They might have one in green or red or white because those are common colors. If you mm -hmm. want to just pay a couple dollars and you can come back and you can just kind of pray your intent over the candle. Like, I'm going to use this candle for me to attract a great love, say. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe it's a red candle, or you might bring home a white candle for protection or bless a house blessing or a house clearing, and you might put your hands above and around the candle and pray the intent to use it to protect your home or clear your home out of of, of energy that doesn't need to be there. So you can do something like that, um, and you can you can actually put a few drops of different oils. I'm going to talk more about oils in a second, but if you want to just up that work a little bit, I would recommend actually something better. If you want to just try it, do what I just described. But what I really recommend is to find a botanica or find a metaphysical shop or go online. And I'll put some sources in the description box below. You can Google Lucky Mojo. Lucky Mojo uh, is out from California. Catherine Ironwood is the, the proprietor there. She does. She's an amazing hoodoo woman, hoodoo worker. She's got every oil and herb and anything you'd ever want in your life. It takes a while to get her stuff sometimes, but I do recommend her stuff a lot. I have a lot of her oils. Anyway, what I really recommend is finding, getting a beautiful colored candle, a colored candle that represents the work you're trying to do. And again, the colors, the smells, all just add to the intention of the working. You can think of every element of your senses as like part of, like turning a dial on the box. Mm -hmm. And so what I recommend is, doing the candle work or whatever you're doing first and then set the box. But anyway, so pick a candle. Let's say, let's say it's, let's just say it's a house blessing, house clearing. We'll use that as an example. Let's say you want, 
Get a white candle. You can get a fancy one that has coconut in it. A coconut's very protect protective. You can get a white coconut candle from a local metaphysical shop or a white candle from the dollar store. Or just get a white candle, right? And you take it and you can um, put it in a holder or if you want, you can put it on a small plate that you're not worried about cooking with or eating on. Mm -hmm. And you can simply get an oil, get some protection oil. You can get something called Van Van oil, which is very clearing and protective. Or you can get clove oil or you can get a citrus oil like a lemon or an orange or and that's very clearing and cleansing. There are mm -hmm. other oils or coconut oils, very protective, like I said. And you can just take some, put it, put some drops in your hand. And then I'm, I'm rubbing my hands together back and forth right now. You can clap them together and put the oil rubbing in your hand and then rubbing it on the candle. And if you want to bring protection to your home, you'd rub downward on the candle, kind of intending to bring it in. You'd rub the oils, whatever you're using, on the candle, downward, mm -hmm. downward direction. Okay. And for example, and you could just take a wax, you could take a, you could melt the bottom of the candle so it drips onto the plate, so it sticks to the plate. You just affix it to the plate that way so it doesn't fall over, right? This is if you don't have a holder. The reason you might want to do it this way is you could put things around the candle on the plate. You're not just putting a candle in a holder. Does that make sense? It makes total sense. It's just a simple way to do it. You can Google all kinds of candle stuff all on YouTube all over. And do it. But I'm just saying for our listeners who are looking for something easy like house protection, you can do it this way. Um, then... You can write on a petition paper, and again, this is not a petition paper writing class, but you can write a petition paper. There's lots of ways to do it. You could do it the Dr. Mulder way, which is just simply writing it down. You could take some of your hair. You could do whatever, but you could write down, well, we pray great protection on this house. Any um, thing that doesn't need to be here is now gone. Everyone in this house is has a great blessing and great abundance, peace, love, happiness, and tranquility, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And you write it on the piece of paper. And you could even anoint that with some Van Van oil or some clear, some beautiful oil that means a lot to you, maybe like jasmine or rose oil. Uh, you can research the different oils that do the different things. But you can put a little bit of oil on that. Or you, again, you could put the oil in your hands, clap it together and mush it back and forth. And you could put the petition paper in your hands and kind of rub it together with the heat of your hand and pray over that, that that works really well. And you could fold it toward you in half turn it to the right and fold it again toward you because you're bringing this protective energy in toward you, something like that, right? So mm -hmm. anyway, and then you could just slip that under the plate. Some people will load that into the candle. There's a lot of ways to do it by putting it into the candle, like creating a hole in the bottom and putting it up in there before melting the candle to the plate, for example. And there's lots of ways to do it. Some people will actually carve into the candle their petition right into the candle wax, right? Right into the candle. That's before exactly they, what Shelly does. Yeah, yeah that's before what, you, mm -hmm. yep. There's lots of ways to do it to skin that cat. And you can, I shouldn't say that because Shelly loves cats, but there's a lot <laughs> of ways to do that. Um, and you could, you would do that before you rub the oil on the candle. I've done it all kinds of ways and I love doing it. I go crazy. I'll, I'll, I'll carve that stuff into the candle. Um, for example, people do a lot of them um, in, in a protective candle. I've seen people do Psalm, part of Psalm 119. A Lord is, the Lord is a light unto my path. Or Psalm 23, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, though I walk through the shadow of death, blah, 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 uh, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, they'll mm -hmm. do all of Psalm 23 into a candle and then put uh, some coconut oil or something healthy or healing on that. And so anyway, you do something like that, and then you could put some uh, herbs around it. You could take rosemary or bay leaves. Uh, you can, a lot of the things you can use are things that are right from your own house. You can put sprinkle salt, Himalayan salt or sea salt or Epsom salt or whatever in protective pattern around the candle to symbolize a clearing. You know, there's lots of things you can do and you can YouTube this and Google, Google this. You can use bay leaves, like I said, rosemary, dill, any of these uh, herbs you have in your kitchen. And you can sprinkle it around and you can offer spirit or offer God flowers to kind of honor them. Um, but people use carnations, for example. Red carnations are very empowering and they speed up the work. So if you put some carnations around the candle, that will speed things up and add power. And uh, again, you could research all of this, but beautiful. If you want to, uh, you could do white roses for protection. You can uh, use flowers from your yard, anything like that. And you can use, uh, people use pumpkin seeds, like raw pumpkin seeds for healing and health and prosperity. There's all kinds of examples of things you can do. I recommend just getting a book by Catherine Ironwood on the different magical 
uh, uh, uses of all the herbs and plants and stuff like that. But anyway, mm -hmm. and you put those on the plate, and then you'd light the candle. But at every stage, here's how I would pray. I would take everything. Let's say I'm praying over the carnations that are going around the candle. I'd put the carnations in my hand, and I would say, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I bless, activate, and empower these carnations to speed up this work. As I'm holding my hand over the carnations, you know, they're in my hands. I to speed up this work and add intense power to this work. Lord God, please help bring this fast. My, protect our home. Protect everyone in it. Everyone who walks in this home is protected and he healed and healthy, happy and healthy. And anyone who should not be coming into this house is just led away from this house. Lord, there's no one in this house. No one enters here that should not be here. And no spirits, no energies, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> mm. And and, um, and in Jesus' name. Now, that's how I pray, right? But you can pray right. anyway. You follow the Norse pantheon or the Egyptian pantheon. But that's how I pray. There's a very, frankly, a hoodoo way to do that. Hoodoo, this is a lot of what I'm describing is hoodoo-like. And hoodoo is basically a Judeo-Christian, African-American, slave, sharecropper, folk magic right and it's mm -hmm. very very powerful uh like i was telling you guys before or dr Mulder before when i was getting my doctorate and all of this stuff which is how i met dr Mulder, i was down and out back then and i was in a doctoral program looking at ways different people answer their questions and so actually dr Mulder, your your radionics boxes were part of my research and i found that hoodoo works the stuff i'm describing tonight hoodoo works in radionics <clears throat> And a few other things and so i just stuck with what works i looked into everything and it's just mm -hmm. radionics is really powerful and this works and powerful i don't call it hoodoo all the time because i don't even want to call myself a hoodoo practitioner i'm so not i'm such a newbie even mm -hmm. calling myself a practitioner is kind of some people would be object to that really i i just enjoy it i love it i love the sense the flowers and I, I i'm a powerful worker but i'm new to this and i'm i can't say that i'm any good at it specifically hoodoo, but I love doing this work and I combine it to have it serve me, right? Anyway, mm -hmm. I pray over every element that I'm doing with the salt, and whatever flowers, whatever herbs, whatever oils, the candle itself. And then as I light the candle, I would then also say, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, I bless or activate and empower this candle that's working to protect our home and keep everybody out that doesn't need to be here. And everyone who's in here is just, we're peaceful and tranquil and we have a healthy, healed bodies. And uh, we just take the next right steps in our lives. You know, pray things like that with the help of my guides, guardians, ancestors, and angels, and in mm -hmm. Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And that's just what I say. Again, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, I bless or activate or empower this working and whatever it is I want it to do. And then I say, with the help of my guides, guardians, ancestors, and angels, and in Jesus' name, and that's how I do it. Now, the thing about herbs and plants and flowers is when you do this working, you have to tell them what you want them to do, right? Like right. bay leaves, for example. Bay leaves can be used for anything. They're a great herb that you can do anything with. You could do it to curse somebody. You could do it to bless somebody. But the bay leaves need you to tell them the work you want them to do. So it is important to pray over everything. So I put a little cinnamon in my coffee in the morning. And I do pray over my coffee that I have a, grist, a blessed, great, beautiful, and amazing day, right? Um, right? And I pray over the cinnamon, that cinnamon brings it fast and quickly and fun. Cinnamon is a fast-acting herb. So when I put the cinnamon in, I even pray over that for my coffee. So next time you come visit, you'll get prayed over coffee, Dr. Mulder. So, but, um, so anyway, that's kind of the idea. And you guys out there, the listeners, can pl play with this for the different workings. If you want to contact me, I can help you come up with some ideas uh, of, of different types of things you can do. But after I've got the candle lit, then I would set the box and even put them next to each other. But that's like ceremony doubled upon ceremony. You know, the radionics boxes I refer to as ceremony with dials, right? Mm -hmm. And the hoodoo stuff or the candle work that I do is like, is like another ceremony, you know? And it's just, I think it's a layering and I think it's could be very beautiful to work together, right? Right. Excellent. Excellent. Very, very good. Very good. <laughs> I, I, you know, hey, uh, like I said, I, you definitely went over the, you, went, you know, went across this thing very thoroughly, uh, for sure. Uh, but, yeah, uh, again, like I said earlier in the program, I, I've used this stuff, you know, or I have incorporated it, uh, you know, with a lot of things I've worked on, uh, including, like, for example, sigils, which is sort of a form of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and again, it's just a uh, yeah, you know, I just find it, it's a, a good way of focusing your consciousness toward a particular goal or intent. And, um, and I just, you know, and, 
and again, the candle stuff, I've worked with that before. I, I, I did some experiments uh, with somebody with a client uh, that was living on the other side of the world. And I noticed, uh, I bought uh, some of these candles, and like they were inside the gla uh, glass cylinder or whatever, and one of them shattered. Oh, man. I mean, oh, wow. Yeah, that's yeah. that's very rare. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, when they shatter, what does that mean? Because that happened to Shelly, too. She said that was rare. It is rare, yeah. So I'm glad Shelly Shelley agrees with me. I like being right. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Shelly being right. I think, I think it can depend. It could be, I mean, it, it takes the intuitive uh, sense of the person. Um, I'm going to tell a story about that in a minute, but I think yeah. it could mean that the magic is very powerful. And it's very kick-ass and it's going to work or it's going to be effective. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you need to be careful because let's say um, it could be that your spell is being attacked by something else. Um, mm -hmm. It can go either way. But I think let's say it makes a big mess on your floor and everything spills and it's ugly and nasty. It could be a battling back. It could be a pushback, right? Mm -hmm. um, or it could be that it's more powerful. I'm sorry I can't give you exact details, but All I right. think you need to – something powerful is happening either a, a, a spiritual pushback but I think the practitioner anybody who's doing that will have to maybe throw some cards or talk to someone or go inside or meditate and decide what it is is it, is it something telling you no knock it off or is mm -hmm. it oh my gosh this is amazing working and I'm going to give you an example you ready go for it in fact I was so gobsmacked by this happening I actually called Shelly and said Shelly oh my god ah so I was doing this to help a marriage because, of course, I do a lot of marriage counseling in the work I do. And there's a couple whom I care about a lot, and they they are where I work, and they're having marital troubles. And I, I think this couple, I think they could make it if they just, you know, can work together a little better. So I was doing it. I had, but I was in lockdown here, and I had two red taper candles that were for Christmas, right? Tall, long, skinny taper candles. So I said, well, the wonderful thing about the wonderful thing about hoodoo or whatever is that you use what's in your kitchen. Like, like you, it's not about having to go on Amazon and wait three weeks back in the lockdown time, mm -hmm. the lockdown Amazon time, and wait three weeks for hibiscus flowers because blah, 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 blah. You know, you use what's in your kitchen. So I had two red taper candles. I had a lot of love oil. I got me a lot of love oils. I got all of them because <laughs> I, I love love. I love love. I have like 15 love oils. <laughs> well, that's the reason why we love you so much. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm so, I'm so lovable, right? So yes. I had love oils. I had, there's a lot of flowers in my friend's yard whose house I was house sitting. I picked these beautiful flowers, offered them to spirit, to God. And I just did, I make, I made a spicy love rice. I take rice and I put a lot of love, a lot of different love herbs in it. So it's red and I had some hot, spicy love rice <laughs> and you can find a recipe for that online. And I, what else did I do? I wrote a beautiful petition paper. I had beautiful flowers from the yard. I got, I went and bought, um, I don't, yeah, I think I went to uh, our local Hispanic shop, which was still open and got beautiful red roses, mm -hmm. red buds. I lit this candle and the candles immediately melted together and flowed together. And they looked the, 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 the drips of flowing down the candle looked like the couple was holding hands. It looked like, Oh, sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. I was so excited. I wrote the names of the couple in each. I wrote the name of her on one candle and the name of him on the other candle. And I wrote all over the candle hearts and like they get back together and they're in love and it's wonderful. And I had helper candles. Otherwise I had a lot of little tea lights I lit about 10 tea lights all around them to support. They're called helper candles. Mm -hmm. And I lit those around and I had it all on my friend's stove so wax could be cleaned up easily and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so the wax flowed together like I was describing. And at one point, it looked like they were holding hands. And then at another point, that changed. It looked kind of like a, um, it looked like male and female parts, I'm just going to say. It looked like very uh, sexual. And I was like, whoa, I took pictures and sent it to Shelly. And she's like, you go, girl. <laughs> you know, and so it was really beautiful. If you're a good boy, Dr. Mulder, I'll send, I'll send you what it looked uh, like. Okay. Send you a right. picture. No, but, right. uh, but, it, but then it flowed, and all of a sudden the candles melted into this pile, but the candles disappeared. Mm -hmm. They burned down so clearly, they disappeared into a little red pile at the bottom. And the, but the candle was still burning. The flame was burning. It burned and consumed all of the wax. And it burned up all the flowers, the fresh flowers. It burned up the petition paper. And I was like, I was looking at the plate like, oh, my gosh, it's going to crack the plate. Wow. And then right in front of me, the plate went. Ksh! And but it consumed this flame consumed everything. I think I had a tablespoon of ash at the bottom from all the flowers and love rice and stuff. This spell or this working was so clearly consumed 
I called Shelly and she goes, oh my gosh, that's so work. So we decided, we knew through the way the whole thing was consumed that the working was accepted and the plate cracked because it was like saying, yes, you got it, crack. Right. But I could also see, I've also had candles where the, like you described, where the glass cracks at the top or where I can't get it lit and it keeps cracking and breaking. And I look at that like, no spirit saying no, stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? So long sense. answer to your question, but that was the most amazing working I've ever done. Like wow. I watched this whole thing get consumed and I couldn't leave it. I was so mesmerized. I stayed and watched this thing for a couple of hours. I, I didn't want to burn it out. I just had to watch it. Huh. And the, I said, that plate's going to crack. And then bam, it cracked. So, so powerful. Um, and the other thing I want to say before is uh, some people will do these candles such as I've described and they'll do it over a seven day period. Mm -hmm. uh, in that case, if you want to do a set, let's say you're at work, I don't re recommend you leave candles burning when you leave the house, right? Everybody be, be safe. Um, but anyway, do it safely. But some people will just light them when they're home from work at night and you might do it over seven days. In that case, what you can do is space your candle out from top to bottom and make a little mark, you know, a seventh of the way down, then two sevenths and three sevenths, right? Space mm -hmm. it into seven blocks and you burn it down that much each night. And they're called a seven day working. You can do a 10 day or 14 day working, but seven days for most size candles is really good. And what I recommend is as you're burning it that night, it might be a couple of hours, a couple hour burn. As you're burning it down, it's seventh time. It's seventh distance, if you will. I would reset the box every night. Uh, okay. If you feel led to do it, if you don't, if you feel led, like you're supposed to leave it, then leave it. I mean, again, folks, this is your intuition, your sovereignty at work. But I think it'd be kind of fun to try, like, because Nick Atchison gave me the idea when he says he puts a box on his chest and tunes it and meditates. I've right. never thought of that before. So I think oh, yeah. as you're doing this every seven, every, every night for seven nights or whatever, you can um, set the box again if you like. But if any of you try that out there, please let me know if that adds to your working, you know, and you could try it with something small, like someone buys you lunch the next day to see if it works quickly. Um, I just do big, powerful work, hoping it's going to work. So I'm not, my life's not an experiment with myself. I just do it. So I don't, I'm not a scientist with myself. Does that make sense? Makes so, total sense. Yeah. I can't I, say for sure, like, but I would love to get an idea of what percent working this increases the work with the boxes or if it does anything at all, or, yeah. or am I just amusing myself, which is quite possible. Oh yeah. Well, I tell you how I did it. I took a, a piece of aluminum foil, okay, which is electrically uh, conductive. Yeah. And I put the candles on top of that. And then I took a lead. One end was a plug, which I plugged into the input of the machine. And the other end had an uh, alligator clip, which I just clipped to the, uh, to the aluminum foil sheet where I had all the candles on. And uh, I just let everything burn constantly because since it was on aluminum foil, it was safe. You know, there was nothing that was going to catch on right, fire right. or whatever. And that's how I did it. And uh, that way, the, you know, I just let the things go. And I had like a seven-day candle for a particular experiment. I just let the thing go 24-7, literally 24-7. Nice. Yeah, and, uh, and so and that was one of the ones that shattered. Even though it shattered, all that wax went right onto the uh, aluminum foil and didn't, didn't affect anything or hurt anything. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that was uh, my way of, uh, of experimenting. You know, it was safe. Plus, I had a lot, a lot of room to work with instead of a, a tiny little, uh, you know, 3-inch by 3-inch uh, copper square. I could actually put, you know, like you like what you were talking about was multiple candles, put them on top of that sheet and uh, clip it to that, uh, you know, clip it uh, on one corner of the of the sheet and then plug it directly into the machine. And so... Nice. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And so uh, that's what I'm thinking in the future. I could, we could probably do that as an experiment. Uh, oh. You know, yeah. And uh, you could, like I said, since it's sitting on the aluminum foil, you got that safety issue taken care of. Okay, so got a question because I'm getting all excited now. Liz uh -huh. is getting excited. You got me excited, Dr. Mulder, in the okay. good way. Okay. okay. So um, this brings me to an idea. So number one, when you did that, what did you find? Did it work? Did you find it effective? Uh, yeah, apparently so. I mean, this was had to do with that uh, particular client that I had out in the Middle East uh, who uh, was having some issues. Uh, right, they, right. You know, and uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that seemed to have been a very effective. Uh, I think like within six months or so, that's when we were able to get some of these problems resolved. And, uh, but yeah, it, it seemed to work for her. 
Okay, so this is fascinating because, and that was a long-term problem, and you added oh, yeah. that layering to it. Okay, so that gives me an idea. So, folks, if you want to try adding candle work or hoodoo magic or what have you to a radionics box, what I would then suggest you could try if you want to get in uh, some clips, some leads with an alligator on one side and a prong or whatever you call it that goes into the box on the other. Mm -hmm. um, you can talk to Dr. Mulder about setting that up or what to get. I couldn't tell you. Um, but you can, instead of affixing the candle directly to the plate, you can cut yourself a circle of tin foil and put that on the plate. Mm -hmm. Right. And then affix everything to that instead of directly to the plate. And then you could clip the alligator clip to that. And then, then you have it on the plate or you folks can set it up any way you want. I mean, some people do yeah. their work in uh, tin foil food containers. I think that's, I like to do pretty work. So I do it on a plate. I oh, don't care if exactly. the plate cracks. I get plates from Goodwill. I don't, but I like to do pretty work with a pretty lovely candle that smells good with beautiful flowers, um, not thrown into a dirty little like, you know, lasagna pan, you know, but, but, but anyway, yeah. folks, yeah, if you guys want to try that, let us know how you, you know, in the comment section, you know, if you find anything interesting. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Like a pie pan, for example. You know, a, you get those yeah, for, you, uh, you know, for 50 cents over the grocery store. I mean, something right, that's right. readily available. Yeah, something along that line. Yeah, you know, that'll work just fine. You'll, you will not it'll be as, as good as putting the, the, uh, the uh, candles directly on the uh, uh, input plate or the copper plate of the machine. It'll, be, it'll work just as effectively. Yes, so, that's great. That's oh, great. yeah. So is there anything else you would add, uh, given what you know about radionics, to what I described tonight? I think uh, for this particular subject, I think we really uh, covered the gambit here. I really do. Uh, this has been uh, I agree with you. If uh, anybody has any questions or any suggestions, please feel free to you know, put them in the comment section of this, uh, of this particular show, and we'll be more than happy to you know, expand on it or go over it next time. But, um, yeah, other than that, I mean, that's just fantastic. Oh, by the way, before we close the show, uh, I just want to give everybody a heads up. I think we're going to have uh, Centero David Longley is going to be back on the show uh, this coming Sunday if, uh, if all works out. And also, we're going to have uh, Carissa Hartley. Uh, she's going to be on the show, I think, uh, probably the last weekend of, of uh, June. Either the, either the third or the fourth weekend of June, she's going to be on the show. So uh, I'm just giving everybody a kind of an update of what's going on. And also, I think... Uh, uh, Jet Black is going to be back on. Let's see, possibly Jet Blake. Eight, yeah, Jet Blake. Jet Blake. Yeah. I keep, yeah. I don't know why I say Jet. Well, Black. because it's Jet. Because it's yeah. like Jet Black's a color. Yeah. That's yeah, why. exactly. Jet Blake. Yeah, I think he's going to be back on uh, probably the uh, maybe the second weekend of uh, June also. So I mean, we're really got a lot of things uh, coming on the uh, coming up here pretty soon uh, with the show. But I, I got to say, uh, you know, this thing. This thing is actually growing, and we're really starting to get a lot of response from people, and it's a lot of positive response. And I, and I think what you and I have done here, we we're actually accomplishing what we set out to do. I mean, it's, it, I'm oh, loving it. And what, yeah, and tell us, what's going to happen when we reach 100 subscribers? Uh, we may have a giveaway. We yeah. may have we may have a giveaway. I don't know yet. We haven't decided what the rules and regulations are going to be or what we're going to give away here. But we may have a nice little door prize for the 100th uh, subscriber. We'll figure it out. When it yeah, happens. we'll have to figure it out how to do that. Yeah. Also, anyway, so before we sign off, I do want to say, folks, that this whole candle work stuff, this hoodoo stuff, if you will, it, um, I, don't, I, I in no way mean to interfere with your faith or your practice. So if this doesn't fit with you, then don't do it. I just want to offer it because I think it's really, really fun. And um, it's a whole body of work. There's a lot of ways to do candles, a lot of ways to do herbs and roots and spices and oils and uh, lighting fires and prayers and petitions. It's a whole body of work. I just gave you a very scant idea of the kinds of things you can do, but feel free to email me at the, in the description box below if you have questions and um, I can, you know, for a small fee, we can do a consult on the kinds of things, or you can look all over YouTube for all the information you like. But anyway, that's all I have, Dr. Mulder. Oh, fantastic. Well, once again, a uh, great show and, uh, and I really had a, fantastic time as always and i look forward to the next one thank yeah, you you always have fun you always i know fun. i do yeah we do we we, we do have fun <laughs> on the show right. but uh yeah remind me i think that we're going to probably do like a little mini show here talking about gambling and lotteries sure. and radionics that kind of stuff and i'm sure you got some things you might want to throw in the mix too with uh, some of the work that you do concerning this you know about increasing luck and that kind of a thing so we'll probably make that uh, sort of a sort of a nice little 30 minute show uh, discussing that issue because I'm seeming to be getting a lot of those problems or a lot of those questions 
and uh, and that's really what inspires me to you know do these little shows. Is when you know they'll come in clusters where I have multiple people asking virtually the same question or or, or commenting about what they want to use the machines for, and I just want to kind of like I figure this that's a sign to me that we need to go ahead and discuss this you know further and uh, give people more details as to how they can set up a machine to you know accomplish some of the things yeah. they're trying to do. Right. You know, folks, that's what we want to do. Dr. Mulder, Dr. Mulder and I want to help you guys be sovereign and make your own decisions and your own choices. We want to give you your power back. So take care, everyone, and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.